Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 26, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ethereum blockchain explorer site Etherscan.io was affected by a cross-site scripting vulnerability earlier today. Cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, of course, are very common, often underestimated in how they allow full control over a browser visiting the site. Luckily for Etherscan, the attacker didn't actually take full advantage of this vulnerability. The attacker instead just displayed a simple pop-up message alerting the administrators and visitors of this problem. When I heard about this initially, I was concerned that maybe Etherscan did display data from the blockchain without validating it and the result would be the cross-site scripting. Instead, it turned out that the vulnerability was much simpler. They use the popular Discus discussion forum on their site and apparently didn't update to the most recent version, which in turn left a cross-site scripting vulnerability in Discus active on the site. Lesson learned, make sure you track all of these components that you're including in your site and make sure they are adequately patched. Also, with cross-site scripting, be happy if an attacker does actually just display a simple pop-up. And a couple of you have asked about the update that was released this week for Apache Tomcat. Well, it turns out two vulnerabilities are being addressed in this update. I didn't cover it earlier because I don't really consider them all that important. One of them, CVE 2018-1336, is a denial of service vulnerability. The second one, 2018-8037, is a bug in how connections are closed and could use to the reuse of user sessions in new connections. Essentially, this would allow an attacker that follows an authenticated user to then take over that user's session. Now, no exploit as far as I know available for any of these, but yes, please patch. And the new DNS over HTTPS protocol has now been in the final stages as far as the specification goes and should become an official RFC sometime this fall. Now, what's still somewhat a sticking point is how browsers will actually implement it. There are really sort of two versions that are being discussed right now. One is that the browser will come pre-configured with a certain server that will be used for DNS over HTTPS queries. Firefox announced that they will use Cloudflare's DNS service. Now, Cloudflare's DNS service, of course, is privacy focused and Mozilla, which is the company behind Firefox, did have a contractual agreement with Cloudflare to not intercept the traffic. But what could happen is that since there are really only a very small number of browsers out there compared to the large number of ISPs that we have, that the concentration of DNS traffic would increase if all the major browsers implement a particular pre-configured DNS over HTTPS server. And this is really sort of one fundamental problem with pointing your network to a particular recursive DNS server in that whoever operates the DNS server always sort of has a man in the middle position to at least be able to inspect the traffic and in some cases if DNSSEC is not used to even alter the responses coming back. And of course systems like OpenDNS do that intentionally in order to protect you from malicious sites. In the end we'll have to see what browsers are doing with this new feature and how difficult it will be to actually change the server being used for the name resolution. 
And the Department of Homeland Security's U.S. CERT is warning of an increase in attacks against enterprise resource planning systems like SAP and, well, we have also talked about PeopleSoft in the past. This is, of course, a trend that you're probably aware of already if you're listening to this podcast. We have seen lots and lots of crypto miners, for example, being used more recently. And overall, in particular sort of last year, we have seen a number of attacks against these ERP systems as attackers become more skilled in taking advantage of the numerous deserialization vulnerabilities in these platforms. Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.